so much of what we're doing fishing is all about the preparation. And this morning, we're in the Proserpine River. Breck is catching the live bait because we're fishing for barra and red fin salmon. really racing against the clock here. The tide's falling in this creek. Greg is on the bow with the cast net. It's all about getting that bait. In many cases, the bait can be harder to catch than the fish we're fishing for. We've got about 10 to 15 minutes in here before we have to get out, or we're gonna be stuck here for six to eight hours. These guys are absolutely killer bait anywhere. We love to eat them, fish love to eat them. But if there's one downside to the old prawn is that when we're fishing for species like barra and threadfin and you try and use stuff like this, everything else loves to eat them as well. So you get a lot of bycatch. So for today, they're not the prime bait. However, they will also make a really good second. What do you reckon, mate? Yeah, mate, I think we've got enough now. No dramas. Hey, mate, I've got a little bit of mud on my fingers and a bit of water on my shorts. Oh mate, I don't know if you have too much to complain about. Yeah, but I've got mud on my fingers. Everybody, this is my very good mate, Daniel Greck. You would remember Grecky as we know him from all the big barramundi and all those great things that he's put us onto, sooty grunter and things like that. And usually Grecky, when you and I fish together, it's all about the lures and the casting and stuff. But you said, get up here, because we're going to do something different. Yeah, mate, we're going to get some live bait. We've got it all set now. And we're just going to go and chase some king salmon and some barra, hopefully. Beautiful kicking back, bit of bait fishing. Yeah, mate, it should be pretty relaxing. That's it. And I know the camera doesn't show it, but let me tell you, like so much of what we do, it's all about the preparation. It's taken two and a half hours, maybe, yeah. to get a dozen mullet and 50 odd prawns. And we were catching heaps of prawns. When I say we, Grecky, <laughs> was catching heaps of prawns, but he said the mullet are the king here. So we've spent the time getting them. Yeah, mate, we need to have those mullet. It's, it's all about them. That's it. And we're fishing on a tide change? Yeah, mate, we're chasing that, that low to high, so okay. it will be, be the push of the incoming and should be good. Beautiful. Mate, I'd be happy to drive, but I have no idea which way's upstream or downstream, so you're in charge. Thanks, mate. Let's get to it. Stitch up number one from the day for my good mate Grecky. Put Lee's backpack under the live bait tank. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> What's with this spot, bud? Uh, we just got just got a nice sweep and bend here, and we've got a, a nice sandbank on that side. So with live bait, and you want the fish to come to you yep. and swim past your lures, uh, swim past your baits. So with the um, sandbank there, it actually forces the fish to come past you. Sure. If you've got any more rope, just let I've out a little, little bit, bit yeah. more. Yeah, I'll just let a meter or two out. Yeah. Just straighten us up a bit, that's all. So what's the overall plan here, mate? So we've just got ourselves positioned sideways to the current. Yep. Um, Is that more so just to open the boat up for yeah, both mate, of us to be able to fish? Yeah, that's it. So sure. you don't have everyone focused towards the back of the boat. Yep. You know, you've got all rod holders along this, this boat that can really sure. help you keep an eye on everything and yeah it's really quite a comfortable way to fish. How long do you give a spot mate before we like move? Uh, I normally give it say an hour or so. Oh okay. Um, you, you know you, you want to basically keep moving yep. but you don't want to move all the time because you've got to give the fish a chance to, to get past you. So. Okay so we're, we're I mean there's snags along this bank but yep. we're fishing a hole? Yeah yeah basically there's there's a few little rubbly patches um, just yep. up a bit further and um, there's actually a nice hole and, and there's that sandbank there beside us just feeding everything into us. So Beautiful. yeah, if we set out the baits spread right across the creek, yep. um, and then anything that will sort of swim past should be able to hear that, that wounded bait fish and um, cruise over to it and eat it. Sounds too good. A really simple way to rig your prawn. Single hook, just like that through the tail. And just sit there and crawl along the bottom. And any predator just goes mm, yummy. Live prawns. Mm. 
Hey. I think you just woke up. Yeah. Beautiful. Now, Brecky, what bait's that on? That's on the prawn, mate. Yeah. It's not a prawn. I hope he's not a caddy, but... Yeah, nice. He's doing the right stuff, mate. Yeah, he yeah. is. Ready. Are you a chance to have a really big barramundi in here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not really in the right season for him, but... It's decent fish, mate. Yeah, it is. I hope it's not a big caddy or something silly. What have we got? Show yourself, mate. Oh, oh, nice. oh, 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 Rick. Wow. What a beautiful fish. Hang on. Let me chuck this. Look at this thing. Man. How good is that? You are a champion. That is a monster. <laughs> How awesome is that? I am so wrapped for you, mate. Do you know why? <laughs> He lives here and he's caught hundreds of them. But one Daniel Breck has spent six weekends chasing threadies and he hasn't caught any. And he was stressing, he's going, Lee, I am just not confident. I'm going, dude, we'll be right. We'll get one. Yeah, six right. weeks work. You've broken right. the drought right. now. I'm stoked for you. That's awesome. You know, your brother said to me, he goes, why don't you try some live bait? And I've been trying and trying on the lures. Oh, look at that, the mate. first live prawn you drop in. And look what at that. What a beautiful How fish. How awesome is that? Yeah, I'm right for you, mate. Mate, it's been a long time coming. I've been busting my balls to try and get <laughs> these on, so this is awesome. Big, small, in that, between. That is actually a really, really nice fish. I'm saying that's in the 90 centimetre mark. Yep. And um, yeah, mate, you're stoked with them every day of the week, so. You certainly are. And yeah. such a powerful fish. Look at that yeah. huge, big fork tail. And these guys can be heartbreakers. They like to show themselves feeding on the shallow flats, on the prawns and the mullet, but they can yeah. be so tough to catch. Well done, mate. How good is that? He has swallowed that hook. I'm just going to chop that off. We're not even going to try and get it out. It's not far down there, but we'll just chop it off, mate, I think. I don't want to do any damage to it. And then we can get back to fishing. What an absolutely beautiful fish. Awesome, mate. Awesome. I really am stoked for you, mate. Thanks, mate. Oh, oh, there you go, I'm on. Oh, he just smashed that as soon as I picked it up. I'm using two outfits, the same as Grecky is, and I've got two that are the same, but with slightly different rigs. All my terminal stuff here is Black Magic, 10 kilo Inferno braid on each of the bait casters, and the two rigs are so basic, but so good. 40 pound fluorocarbon leader, nice and tough. Grecky rates this stuff even for the really big barra up in Proserpine and all those sorts of, you know, impoundments where the giants live. And then on this one, a bean sinker straight down to a KS50. That's what I'm going to fish my live mullet on. And this one here, I've got a running rig, so I've got a sinker and a swivel, about a foot and a half of leader down to a 4.0 KS. And on that one, I'm going to run the live prawn, mixing it up a little bit just to see what works. Grecky's doing the same with his outfits. Yep, nice. Nice. Can't believe how much he stuffed around with that cracky. For a prawn? Yeah. I thought it would have just whacked. You got a bit of weight? Yep. Yeah, I reckon this is a king. Do you? Yep. Those head shakes? Yeah. Yep. Cool. It's coming up a bit high. Oh, maybe it might be a barra. Those head shakes are sort of similar between the two. Yep, yep. Oh, he's doing that. Is he running towards the boat? Yep. Yep. If he takes off now, it should be a king. Here we go, little, little fella. King. Little fella, that's all right. Yeah, not bad. I think we've found the undoing of the old threadfin salmon, mate. Yeah, it must be with all those big prawns around. Yeah. They must be loving it. Look at that. Look Great at those whiskers there. just straight out trying to feel you. Yeah, and look at that. He swallowed that prawn right down there, and he was just tapping away at that bait like a little tiny brim would. I can see the tail of the prawn down there. I'm not even going to try and get that hook out because I'll do more damage if I do that. So we'll just get these in as close as we can. Give you all a nice look at that and quite a unique species. They don't change shape as they get bigger, they just get bigger. Huge tail on them which gives them all that power quite fast. And probably one of the more frustrating fish up here, Grecky. Yeah, mate, once they get on those jelly prawns, they're really, really hard to tempt with anything else. They certainly aren't. It's really frustrating seeing a metre of threadfin salmon smashing up bait fish in, a me in half a metre of water and you just can't catch them. But anyway. Oh, that's it. On the 
again. Oh, oh. Jack, what have we got? What have we got? What have we got? Let's keep that rod down. It's like it takes him a few seconds to wake up, Greg. Yeah. What have we got here? Oh, another little fella. They're fast, these guys, aren't they? Yeah, yeah mate. That tail, tail's got heaps of power. Yeah. You'll notice this rod I'm using, it's one of the Storm Tricksters. And it's from the Malaysian Storm guys, they use them a lot for lure fishing. I'll fix this up, mate. Oh, hey, it's just, just the big mullet, man. And you'll notice that this rod's really long, it's six foot eight. It's an awesome lure casting rod, it's got this beautiful soft tip, but it's also perfect for doing this sort of stuff. He doesn't know when to stop. There we go. Awesome. Hooked right where we were wanting. Good to see the whole bunch of those fish still coming through. Look at that, that little KS4 right where it should be in the corner of the jaw. And on that fish tool, you notice I didn't strike. I just sort of wound into him like I would if it was a circle hook. And that just allows that hook to find its position rather than potentially bouncing it straight back out of that, what is quite a large mouth for not an overly huge fish. Great looking animal too, lots of different colors in them, the bronzy golds, big tail, big fins. It's time for him to go back and see those big feelers there. They push them forward and they're very, very responsive to any movement. They would feel the prawns and stuff along the bottom and the bait fish and know where fish are before they can even see them. It's quite amazing that for something that's grabbing a live bait, whether it's a prawn or a mullet, that the bites are just so timid. They're tiny little bumps and taps. You know, and that could turn out to be a metre thread fin or a metre barramundi or whatever. You've got to be right on it. And that's where these soft tip rods are just so good. Yeah, look at that. He's got, got me bait. Only three little bites. Either he's too fast or you're too, you're too slow. Probably the latter one yeah, there, mate. That's it. He's just free spooling that line out. And he's dropped oh. it. And it's hard. It's, it's, a, it's a short, timid but still a bit of an aggressive bite. So that's where they get that bait off so quick. Yep, yep. This is gonna be a good fish. Yeah. Yep. Now dude, I'll back this off, put this in the holder. This is a big mullet too. Yep. All right, dude, that was a bit unusual. <laughs> Dan was rebaiting a prawn. I'm like, oh, so, oh, sorry mate, it's just your live mullet. And then I looked and the line was going up under the boat. This is a pretty solid fish. There's the mullet. Oh, he's not that big, mate. Oh, you've overcalled it. It's a, um, it's a blue, salmon. blue salmon. Cool. Bit of variety. Yeah, it's not bad. He's done all right for himself there. I'll it's say. A, it's a big blue salmon. He's eating the big mullet. He's sending the police after us. No, that's my ride home. Oh, OK. Oh, I wish. He's a very, very big blue salmon. He's it's a, a nice really one. good one, isn't yeah. he? Wow, that's a big one. Obviously, when you look at this guy, a cousin or a relative of the out threadfin salmon, has mouth or teeth like really raspy sandpaper. But as you can see, that body shape, the same big strong fork tail, that same sort of head, that, which is very much like a white bait when yeah, you look at yeah, it. Yeah. But this guy hasn't got the big feelers of the threadfin and doesn't grow anywhere near the big does he? This is a good size one for, I'll say. for around here, so it's yeah, pretty cool. Good thing about these guys is they're generally far more catchable on lures than, than the threadies. Yeah, they can't resist anything that's moving pretty quickly. No, that's it. We'll get that hook out and we'll let him go. There you go. Oh, oh, he turned into me. <laughs> Wanted to say goodbye one more time. That's what he thought of you. And now we're fishing. I've got my two rods in and you're out. <laughs>
the gear Grecky and I are using is same, same, but different. He's using the spin gear, he's got the little Gamoku spin and he's got another heavier sort of six to eight kilo spin rod. I've got my Barra bait cast gear and it's the same gear I'll use for, you know, cod fishing or, or that sort of stuff. One of the very long six foot eight tricksters and a six foot three trickster. Both of them have got beautiful light tips, as do Grecky's spin rods, matching them to the new little Seros bait casters. I like this because I can just sit here with the reel and free spool, thumb on the line, and when I get one of these little tick tick bites, I can just let that line roll out just like that and feed that bait to the fish. Grecky's doing the same thing, he's just backing the drag off when the fish comes along, it takes line, and when need be, put the reel in gear and you've got him on. Oh, oh. Got him? Yep, yep. Nice, mate. Don't know what it is. Decent, mate? Oh, uh, yeah, mate. It's got, it's got a bit of power behind him. Oh, oh. Barra, nice. Nice. Real nice. How's that, though? You said the Barra just smashed yeah. the livey and that rod just went crack. How good's that? Awesome, mate. There he is. Oh, look at that. Beautiful, Beautiful. salty barra. Really chromy coloured. Yeah, in that 60 mark too. That guy's so bright, you nearly need sunglasses to look at him. How good is that? That's awesome, mate. That is a fish well worth chasing. It is, mate. Well it done, is. Greggy. Thanks, mate. Thank you very much. Oof. You'll grow up nice and strong in this river. If you ever catch a barra, watch them. Yeah, little sucker right there. That gets you every time. Grab him by the tail. Right, Lee, we just come up to a nice big hole here. It's got a couple of nice sand ridges just out there in the middle. So yep. what we'll try and do is anchor upside onto it again. Sure. And then um, we'll try and float our baits down Back along that it. ledge. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. yep, yep. A really good tip with anchoring is to lower your anchor over the side. Don't just throw it in. We're in a nice quiet part of the world the fish don't necessarily want to hear the splash and the crash of an anchor and chain. And doing this can often see you hooked up with that first bait in the water because you haven't spooked the fish. As you see, I've got my anchor out here. Grecky's put his back anchor out there. And what we're doing is putting ourselves sideways in the tide. For now, we've got the last of the run out tide, but when it turns, we'll have this beautiful sit. Wind and tide going the same way. And it's just a matter now of pulling up on this anchor while he lets a bit more rope out on that anchor and we'll find that happy medium will sit that boat beautifully sideways, open it up and give us more fishing room. Got ya. I'm trying to get a prawn out or a live mullet out and this guy got whacked. And this was actually just a dead prawn because I sort of wanted to make sure I saved some bait till the tide change. And look at that. One of my favourite fish in the world is mulloway or jewfish. And I don't care if they're black jewfish or the guys we get down south. They look so good and they cause so many people sleepless nights, especially down home, because they're really hard to catch. Up here they're a little bit more aggressive. There we go. I'll send him back to go and do what he needs to do. Grecky did tell me that one of the biggest black jewfish he's ever seen came from this spot right here, so fingers crossed. What do you got there, Lee? I have no idea, mate. No idea, but that was a better size mullet. Yeah, he's running out in the deep there. He's taking his time. Good, bad, or in between? That what should be a good thing, mate. And Grecky, do you think it's a, it's a case of fish moving through on the tide or that they're sitting in, a, in that hole there that we're fishing? No, mate, they'd be definitely moving through. Yep. That's one of the advantages of, of live baiting, I suppose, is that you know, the fish is actually coming to you. Sure and you're just ready for them. There we go. Rough old mouth on them, like sandpaper. Yeah, mate. Pretty standard size blue salmon, but yeah. Good fun, great fighter, fantastic eating. And ow, and just for that, he can go back. And I'll tell you what, Grecky, you, as always, have been a superstar. You've produced the goods, he's produced the big thread fin salmon, but it's not from lack of work. He's put a lot of groundwork in in this river the last few weeks, and it is one of your home rivers. Yeah, mate, yeah, it is. Been a lot of hard work. It's nice when it pays off though. It does, it is very good. It is a great part of the world up here at Prosser Point. If you get a chance, get up here and find yourself some of these wonderful fish that we've been into. Apparently I have to go back to a freezing cold Melbourne now, mate. <laughs> it's definitely not freezing cold up here. Yeah, great, that's it for us. <laughs>